Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. Today, we're going to be attempting to run through Batman, the original based on the first movie, on the 8-bit Nintendo. Now, it's been a while since I played this game. Um, probably not as long as on my last Let's Play, Abadox. Uh, it's probably been at least a few months, and I was not able to complete it the last time I played this game. Um, that last time I played this game, it actually had been a genuinely long time since I last played it. And I had to sort of relearn the bosses. And what I did for this playthrough is I went ahead and took a look at some boss rush battles on YouTube. Just to kind of familiarize myself uh, with the bosses again. Because they're going to be the part, or the parts in this game where I'm going to struggle the most. The stages, I'm, I'm fine on. I should be fine on anyway. Even that final tower right before the Joker, uh, I should be fine on. It's the bosses, though, that are going to give me a problem. And the problem is, if you die at the bosses, you get shot back pretty far, especially on the Joker stage. So, uh, basically what's going to happen is we're going to see if we can finish this game, guys. Um, it's not going to be a perfect run by any means, but uh, you're going to get to see how I play this game, my own style, so to say. Everybody kind of plays a lot of Nintendo games differently than one another. I watched a couple of videos, and each person played completely differently, so... You know, we'll, you guys will kind of get to see how I play this game. So, uh, all right, might as well go ahead and just let this story roll out. Uh, all right, that's it. So let's go ahead and hit start. And I guess you know what I'll do is I'll go ahead and let the cutscenes roll out between stages. That's not normally something I watch, but uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do that. There's one thing for sure about this game is, man, the graphics are awesome in this game. And I'm sure ever, all you guys watching already know about the kick-ass soundtrack, but the graphics in this game just, they, they hold up really well. I mean, this game was what, I don't remember what the copyright date said, was it 1990? Uh, pretty, pretty good stuff for back then. Or was it 89? If it was 89, then man, even better, so... Alright, so you hit select to pause the game, and you hit start to switch your weapons, that's right. You got the gun, you've got whatever the hell that thing is called, and you got the boomerang, or the batarang. So, it's been months since I last played this game, so I'm gonna have to get warmed up. Oops, I knew better than that. Those flamethrower guys, you see them a lot throughout the game, and it's basically they just, they fire, they stop. They fire, they stop. It, there's a very strict pattern to them, so you just wait for them to stop, uh, walk in, attack them. That's basically it. Most of the, uh, the the enemies in this game have very specific patterns. Actually, not most. I'd probably say just about every enemy in this game has very specific patterns. Like those guys on the ground, the little mine things. You get near them, they start chopping real quick, and then you have to jump because then they come after you just like that, and they explode. If you look at the flamethrower guys on the right, you see what I'm talking about? It's just flame on, flame off, flame on, flame off, blah, 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 and then just attack them in between, kind of like that. Uh, if you've been paying attention, you can see that you can wall jump in this game. And what's kind of cool is you can actually hold the button to go a little bit higher, or you can just tap it and do very, very light wall jumps like that. You know? So that's actually pretty crucial later on in the game. There's some platforming segments that kind of require you to sort of have a little bit of finesse when uh, when you're doing it. So and you'll kind of see me do that as the video progresses. That's something that uh, I kind of am able to hold on to over the years, even if I don't play this game. Whereas the boss battles, you know, they're very uh, memorization based. The, uh, the wall jumping is uh, there's a little more instinct going on there for me. Um, so it's easy for me to sort of finesse the wall jumps. Or just jumping a period, I just kind of like tapping along, like on these little platforms, instead of going whoosh, and kind of floating through the air. I like tapping my way along to just kind of speed through things a little bit quicker. So... Yeah, we're basically at the boss already. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, a lot of stages later on in the game, they're like multi-screen, you'll go out of the screen, you'll go to a new area, etc, etc. Et All 
And what I like to do on this boss is use this weapon because you can hit him twice with it. It'll go bam, bam. It'll hit him once and then it'll spread out and it'll hit him again. So you can kind of get two hits uh, for one shot. That is the most powerful weapon in the game. Um, I really don't recommend using the battering all that often on specific bosses. Like this second boss, you don't want to use the battering or the boomerang. The third boss, you kind of do. But you can also use the, the gun or you can use this and you'll get kind of the same results. You might actually kill the third boss faster with this weapon. Uh, we'll kind of try that out and see how it works once I get to him. But the second boss, you don't even need the boomerang at all, if I recall correctly. Fourth boss, you just want to use your fists. Uh, the final boss, though, there's two forms. The first form, the boomerang seems to seems to work really well. But uh, it's not the kind of weapon you want to use on, on every boss. It's, it's more useful for uh, just progressing through the stages. And what am I doing here? I know better than that. <laughs> Some shortcuts you can take. But I'm too busy talking, so I wasn't taking them. <laughs> you, can zoop, you can use the boomerang on these guys. It worked really, really well. And the nice thing about the boomerang is it doesn't take up as much ammunition as uh, the other weapons do. Like, the gun uh, takes away three shots each time. Boomerang just takes away one, so... And it goes through walls. Which the gun does not. Whoa! Thought I killed it. Alright. Now, this game starts getting tricky pretty early. Um, and it really starts getting tricky right here. But you can just take little shortcuts like that. To skip through certain parts. One thing that's really good to know in this game, when you're trying to play, is when you hit an enemy, um, they kind of can't hurt you for a split second. And that's actually really, really, really useful, especially on uh, bosses. Because what you can do is you can just keep punching, and even if the boss keeps moving, um, even if the boss keeps moving, so long as you keep punching and you time it right, They'll just move right through you, and you won't get hurt by them. Really, really good to know. And every time you do attack them, um, you kind of stun them. So, you know, their, their actions won't come out nearly as fast. Oh, that was dumb. Their actions won't come out nearly as fast um, when, you're, when you're constantly stunning them, so... Really good information to know. If you're having a problem with this game, <laughs> uh, just wail on the enemies. Make sure your attacks connect, um, especially with the fist. And you can have more, more control over the flow of the game. The gun, I do not recommend using. Um, I recommend using the gun as sort of like a sniper item. Uh, it's really going to stay straight, and you'll see what I mean once I get there. But... There's a delay, like, you can't move the second uh, you fire it. You're, you're stuck for a few moments, so that can actually kind of um, get you up in a bind, get you in a bind, which is not good. Uh, these sort of missile things here, you can actually grind away on them to build your ammunition back up. I suggest ducking, because it gives you a few more milliseconds to judge your attack. You try to attack right as they come down, you're more likely to miss because you, you know, your timing has to be more precise. The nice thing about this is you can grind for health as well. Like so. And when three items appear on the screen, no more will fire at you, just like that. That's three, so now it's not going to fire. I'm at 99, so who cares? Oh, crap! 
Nah, who cares? I'll be fine. Should be fine anyway. Look at the animation on those things. I mean, it's just... It's a Nintendo game. There's, there's very few NES games with animation that smooth. And you know what's funny is that it's, it's probably drawn where there's only like actually three frames there or something like that. But just, you know, it, it gives the illusion of something that's just animated very, very well. Actually, it might only be two frames, but it, it looks very smooth for an NES game, which is really cool. Batman definitely holds up as being one of the best looking NES games, in my opinion. Uh, it's just very, very solid. But this is one of those games with uh, some hefty memory mappers in it, so it's not like it's... <laughs> it's not like it's just being done on the strengths of the NES alone, you know, there, there's more in that cartridge trying, basically, you know, kind of allowing it to do what, it, what it's doing. So... This is one of those sections where there's multiple ways you can go. Like so. As you can see, I kind of went the top way, as opposed to bouncing over those uh, uh, things and not getting hurt. I don't even know what I'm saying now. <laughs> I'm tired. Hey, right, so this part right here, what I like to do is, oops, is not do that. <laughs> Jump on it like that. And this is another part you can kind of grind away at as well. These guys will keep spawning out at you. Although I think you have to keep pushing the screen for it to happen. Like so. So I'm getting near the boss and I don't think there are any more of those missile things. So this is kind of like my way of building my health back up. Like so. Now, I don't think I'm gonna need full health at this boss, but you know what? Screw it. We'll do it anyway. You definitely need your ammunition on this boss, though. That's for sure. But I'm already at 99 uh, ammunition, so... That's not a problem. Oops, god, I keep missing that one guy. My timing's gotta be a little more precise. This is a game where you can keep mashing your punch, but I, I prefer to time it. Like so. Uh, you'll see videos where guys are just mashing away like that, and it works, but I feel like I have more control if I just time it right. <laughs> or time it wrong. Alright, that's fine. Yep, we're at the boss now. I'm gonna use this, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Oops. This is a three-part boss. Three different things you have to destroy. The last part, uh, you can just destroy with your fists. Uh, that big thing on the right kind of opens up, and it shoots a three-way shot. And you just jump up at it, and... Constantly, uh, wail away at it with your fists. You know what I could be doing is just using this one. Because technically it's more powerful. Just like so. Now this is where the game starts getting really, really tough. There are these jumping guys on this next stage, and man, if you get caught by them, you are... You're toast. So what I like to do is try to... Walk in slowly, you can see him bouncing to the right. And just time an attack like that. And basically take him out from a distance. I mean, they're perfectly doable. If, uh, you know, you get up close to them, you whip out your, your punch. And, uh, but I prefer doing it like this. You have to make sure your hits count, though, once your ammunition starts getting low.
That was close. If I inched uh, a little bit farther out, he'd start jumping at me. And this is not a part you want him jumping <laughs> after you add. So... Just like so. There's one more, I think. Yeah. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad, too. <laughs> I think that's the last one. And then there's another missile guy up here. And I can try to replenish my health and ammunition at. Kill that thing first, just to make life a little bit easier. What I mainly want to do here is just build my ammunition. My life is, is maxed. Just surprisingly, normally I screw up that whole first stretch and I get hit somewhere along the line. And I start to have a, a hard time. But that's not the case this time. Oh, crap, or I do something stupid like that. I get disoriented because hitting select pauses it. <laughs> Whereas hitting start um, switches your weapons. Normally it's the other way around. But they were probably like, you know, you gotta reach farther to hit the select button, and you'll need to scroll through your weapons more frequently. So we'll, we'll put the uh, the scrolling one on your, on your start button. It's closer to your, your trigger finger. <laughs> and that's why you don't want them jumping at you like maniacs. Ah, uh, I lost a lot of health there. That could have not well, probably wouldn't have been avoided because there wasn't really anywhere else to go. So just kind of time your attack. You watch him go up, and then you try to um, base your attack on that. I don't think there's another one. No, there's not. One of those big jumping guys, so this is it. Yeah, there's another one down below though, he respawned. <laughs> Sucker. Alright, now we're at the last stretch. Not really the last stretch per se, but the last section. The last stretch is still a ways away. Now this part, there's going to be these big machines here. Like so. Why am I doing that, man? If you don't want to waste your ammo, again, you can take advantage of the not being hurt when you're attacking enemies uh, sort of deal. And what I like to do in the fire guys is just, you know, use that to my advantage. Oh yeah, slow down. You can use the slow down to your advantage too. <laughs> but you know what, screw it, we'll just use the boomerang because it just makes life easier. You know, I don't think I'm going to need full health here either, because I I'm familiar with uh, the pattern on this boss. <laughs> Thanks to watching that YouTube video, I remember how to beat him. Uh, let me actually tell you a little story, guys. Is You know, I've been playing Batman on the Ape and Nintendo since I was a kid. Uh, it wasn't a game I owned, and it wasn't a game I had access to frequently. But I did rent it one time for a weekend, and I played the crap out of it all weekend. Uh, it was very, very difficult for a, a what, like a, an eight or nine year old kid when I first rented it. Um, 
Fast forward about a decade, it was about 2001, I was collecting NES games for the first time. <laughs> first time. And uh, Batman was one of the games a friend and I just kind of played religiously. And we were never able to beat it. We were never, never able to finish it. But, uh... Oh, what? Seriously, man? Okay, you have to be standing over there to do it. Story pause. <laughs> uh, basically, what I was going to get at is, is we were playing Batman a lot back in 2001, 2002. And while I was never able to beat it, I was able to figure out pretty much all the bosses up until the last boss, uh, Joker. And, um, so basically what I'm doing right now, even though I watched the YouTube video, it was more like, uh, the pattern came back to me. You know, it was like, oh, that's right, that's how I did it. Because the last time I got to this guy, I remember having a really hard time. I'm like, Jesus Christ, his, his attack takes up like half the screen. What am I supposed to do? Batman's like a freaking tank. A tank. And, you know, and then I watched that video just right before doing this video. And I was like, oh, duh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And that's what I did 10 years ago. Back when, um, you know, I was really making real progress at Batman as, as a, you know, an 18 or 19 year old. So... Yeah, while, while I had the aid of that YouTube video, it was more or less kind of like bringing back memories and um, sort of familiarizing myself with the game again. It's not like I had to look at it uh, because I just didn't know how to beat the bosses, period. Or, I mean, I've never beaten them, period, but I needed that refresher. Otherwise, I'd probably get stuck on this game really quickly and it would become a boring Let's Play, so... But uh, yeah, back in 2001, 2002, a buddy of mine, uh, buddy of mine and I were playing this game a lot. It was one of our favorite NES games to play. This Journey to Silius, uh, Ninja Gaiden, um, which he was he was kind of impressed with Ninja Gaiden. He was one of those guys that um, had no idea you could play it the way you could play it, and. Um, you know, I, I, many of you guys have seen me play through Ninja Gaiden, you've been, if you've been subscribed for a while anyway. If you haven't, check out my Ninja Gaiden's uh, long play videos. I got long plays of all the Ninja Gaiden games, uh, including a Let's Play of the Japanese version of Part 3. Um, but I play those games in a very brisk manner. I run through them very fast. And he, back then, my buddy was just, he, you know, this was like 2000, 2001. So the, the NES had only been off the market for about seven years. So we, we had grown up with the system. It was still fresh in our minds because, you know, it, we played a crap ton of NES as kids. We were kids. We had the time. Um, but he was one of those kids, one of those guys, actually, um, that never experienced anybody playing through a game like Ninja Gaiden at the speed that I did. You know, that was, that was new to him at the time. Uh, now with YouTube and Let's Plays and things like that, it's not so special, but back then, we didn't have things like YouTube, we didn't have things like videos to watch. Um, and even the, the tutorial videos that you might have had on like those VHS tapes, looking back at them now, they were actually pretty crappy um, compared to some of the speedruns uh, you see on things like YouTube. And my, just my skills in Ninja Gaiden really blew them away. And that kind of trickled over into Batman. We'd play Batman, and I'd kind of like put my Ninja Gaiden skills to use in Batman. And, um, you know, he was always impressed with that too. And just the fact that they were, this game offered a big challenge, we, we ended up playing it a lot back then. And uh, so, again, I, I was really familiar with the bosses back then. Uh, I, you know, it's been so long since then, though, I definitely needed a refresher in order for this Let's, to, let's Play to even be remotely interesting. <laughs> the platforming, though, is like second nature to me. It just, it feels natural to me. Uh, so in those boss fights, though, I definitely needed uh, a reminder on uh, how to get through them, so... And here we are now. God, 
God, this game has had such a good soundtrack. Uh, back then, around the same time, uh, 2000... 2001, 2002, I, uh... <laughs> Actually, another funny story came to mind. Uh, I'll tell you that in just a minute. But, um... You know, you didn't have things like, uh, YouTube. Um... Video game music as a whole, it was kind of hard to get. It was, if you if you heard video game music, like downloaded on your computer, it was typically in the form of MIDI files that would use built-in samples in, in your sound card um, to concoct recreations of original video game tunes. Uh, but what I did was kind of um, different for the time, you didn't, you didn't see it as much back then, was I, would, I hooked my NES into the back of the sound card on my computer, and I loaded up Windows um, <laughs> Sound Recorder, <laughs> Windows freaking Sound Recorder, and I recorded the uh, the tracks from a lot of these games. Batman, I, I still have um, all the stage tunes on my computer from back in 2000, 2001, 2002, uh, from hooking the NES up to my uh, my PC. Quality is kind of bad, but uh, you know back then it was the early days of MP3. I had an MP3 uh, encoder, and I encoded it at like a whopping 128k <laughs> per second because that was just amazing back then. And now I won't ever think of uh, encoding an audio track at 128k. But I had a lot of NES music like this on my computer uh, that I recorded manually myself. And this, Journey to Silius, um... And, uh, yeah. It was so cool back then, and my buddy and I, we actually enjoyed the music so much, we would actually burn it to CDs. Um... And, uh, listen to it in our car. Or his car, because I didn't have a car. Uh, actually, I just got a car, but I didn't have one that had CD players. <laughs> my first car, it took a little while to get a CD player in it, so... Um... But yeah, I, would, I, would, I did the same thing for uh, other things, like uh, Kiss Psycho Circus on the PC uh, was a game that there was no soundtrack for. Uh, there's no way to just... Uh, the game didn't use like MP3 files, it used a very proprietary sound format, so... And uh, I re hooked one computer up to my other computer... Or, I'm sorry, I hooked one computer into the sound card of my other computer and recorded Kiss Psycho Circus, the video game music, uh, that way. Just like I did with the NES. Uh, it's kind of funny. Funny to me. But we would drive around with it, and we would listen to it, jam out to it in the car. Freaking Nintendo music in 2000, 2001, 2002. <laughs> funny story, though. Uh, another funny story is, um... Taking that concept further, uh, my buddy and I, we used to, like, to kind of play pranks back then. Uh, stupid little things. Um, one, one thing I did was uh, I recorded Super Mario Brothers music, the very first level. And, um... <laughs> a really long track, and I burned it to a CD. And, uh... We went to one of, like, the, the hot spots, like, like all the jocks and, you know, chicks would hang out at. You know, places that we didn't really care about. And, um... Uh, we took his Mercedes up there. He had his Mercedes. His dad gave him old, old Mercedes. It wasn't like he just bought him a brand new car. It was a hand-me-down. Uh, probably like 20 years old by that point. But um, <laughs> we went to this really busy movie theater. Uh, it had like this parking garage, and all these kids would hang out there. And we just we drove through, and we pretended like we were looking pimp, looking all serious, nodding our heads, and had Super Mario Brothers level one music playing. It was like do 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 do, and we're driving through all slow, just nodding our heads up and down, all serious, like those guys do when they listen to hip hop. And they 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 blare the hip hop and rap outside of their car, or I mean, sorry, in their car, and they just look all serious, and they drive through the area slow to get people's attention. We did the same thing, but with Super Mario Brothers music, and it was just hilarious. Everybody was just kind of like looking at us like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, good times. Um, I was like 18, 19, 19 or 20, I think, actually, when we did that. Uh, I was just out of high school. It was, it was within that first year of us being out of high school. And, um, 
so... Uh, we did some goofy stuff like that. We did some goofy things, actually. <laughs> we took, uh... <laughs> some construction sign cones. I'm sorry, construction cones. And would take them and steal them. And then go and, like, put them on my friend's car. So he'd come out in the morning with this big cone. Uh, on top of his car. Uh, good times. And we did just stupid stuff. We didn't, like, you know, do anything violent or anything like that. We were, that was, that, that would be stupid. But, the things like stealing the cones, it was hilarious. To us, anyway, it was hilarious. To, to other people, it's probably really stupid. But, uh... <laughs> Alright, this is actually where my controller is It's not being all that responsive, doing the diagonals. And you kind of need to do diagonals on this part. Actually, you don't really need to. Now that I think about it. So basically what you can do is you can sit up here... And, uh, destroy this guy. Just like that. Now we're on the final stage, guys. <laughs> Going back a step, now that now, now I'm not at that boss, um, we would put uh, those construction cones on top of uh, my friend's car. We were also driving down uh, one of the main roads, one of the main highways one day, and we saw a, a, um, a pizza sign, you know, like the delivery driver sign that you would put on top of uh, your car to deliver pizza. And I guess it fell off. Uh, it fell off someone's car. And instead of like taking it and like returning it back to the pizza joint, we were like, dude, what can we do with this? So we like, we slapped it on top of our car and drove around town with the pizza sign on it. But then, like, instead of dropping it off at the pizza joint, we went to my friend's house, and we, it was like 3 in the morning, we just slapped it on top of his car and just drove off. <laughs> oh, man. Stupid, stupid stuff, but it, it's always gonna be funny to uh, my buddy and I that, that did that. Uh, funny enough, you know, like, NES and Batman was, um... You know, that's what we did back then. We, we would hang out, play NES, if we weren't doing stupid stuff, driving around. <laughs> Getting into innocent trouble. Not real trouble, just doing really stupid stuff. That was just kind of funny to us and obnoxious. Uh... <laughs> Man, that was like, that was like 12 years ago now. That was a long, long time ago. So. Alright, this is where you're... <laughs> Jumping finesse really comes into play, uh, especially at this next big vertical segment. You really have to have a lot of finesse. I'm going to build my stuff here just so I don't completely get destroyed at this next part. I think I'll be fine, but I don't want to take any risks. We're at 99 and full health. We are good. Alright, so these guys here, this is the perfect example of jumping in and not getting hurt when you're punching them. So let it go. He goes one, and then one, two. One, two. Just like that. Punch him, just like that. Now this is the tricky part. Oh yeah, got it. I'm like, oh yeah! Oh crap. <clears throat> one, get up, attack. Wait for them to attack. Don't jump up there while they're attacking, because it's yeah, you're probably gonna get hit trying to uh trying to jump up there. And I, I love the inertia in this game. Like you just you can really use it to your advantage, and it's it's responsive when you're trying to punch. It's like there's a little section where you can't, you know, you're grabbed onto the wall, you're you're being propelled off. But once you find that sweet spot when you can start attacking, like I'm mashing the button right now. You'll notice like I'm not punching right away. So but once you get to that part where you can where you can let go and just start wailing away, uh, 
you know, it just, yeah, you really feel like you're in control in this game, which is, I, I love. I love a game where you really just feel like you're, you're completely in control. So, let's go ahead and build our health. We're gonna kinda need to at this part. And we'll just kinda see how, uh, how this goes. Now, to kind of go back and talk about my origins with this game and playing it as a kid and then playing it more seriously as a very young adult. Uh, I actually did not beat this game back in 2001, 2002. Uh, it wasn't until 2008 that I actually finished Batman for the very first time. Uh, in 2006, I sold much of my video game collection. I kind of got out of collecting. I was still playing a lot of modern games and things like that, and I still kept a couple. I still kept about ten systems. Um, you know, you're saying ten? Wow! But I mean, keep in mind, before that, I had like 30, 40, 50 systems in my collection. Um, so, ten was still kind of a small amount for me. But basically, what happened is I eventually had to sell all of them off. 2006, I had a really big sell-off. Uh, 2007, 2008. Between those years, I had basically eventually sold everything to make ends meet. You know, I quit my job. I that was really stupid. I was jobless for a few months. Had to sell stuff. Um, and even when I managed to get another job, saved money again, I ended up being jobless again shortly after that. So you know, to make ends meet, I ended up selling everything. There was a point where I did not have a single video game system, aside from my Xbox 360. Actually, no, that's not true. There was a point where I didn't even have my 360. I sold it in 2008, I think. Uh, again, to make ends meet. And, um... So I was just playing computer games. I was on my computer all the time. But in 2008, I got a clone system again. Uh, I bought an FC Twin. And, um... Yeah. I started going to Starland again. Got a bunch of NES carts, and Batman was one of them. And because those were the only video games I had, aside from computer games and emulation. So I played them. I really, really played them. Whereas right now, I have probably 300, 400 games in my collection still. I don't play them. I don't play, play them. But back then, I really, really played these games, because that's all I had. Um, and lo and behold, you know, probably... Probably 18 years after I played it for the first time, I ended up beating Batman. So... And here we are now. That was actually the only time I beat it. Uh, I haven't beaten it since. I beat it a couple times. Like, once I did it, I had to go back and do it a few more times. But after that, I haven't finished Batman since. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this final battle. I want the boomerang. Basically, you just kind of do this. Yeah. Oh, crap. That's not good. Alright, I might not get this because, uh... Yeah, I'm being really stupid with the timing. Really gotta predict this fireball, because god damn, it's such a big fireball, man. Alright, Joker, I don't think they refill my health, so it's like, it's gonna be like one or two hits and I'm gonna die, so. And I'm gonna have to do that entire stage over again, so. Yeah, you've gotta step back and dodge the lightning. Oh, it starts me right back here, that's, that's great. That is awesome. It's only when you continue you've got to go all the way back. That's right. Ah, oh, crap. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this now. No, I'm stupid. I was mashing. Oh, I had to continue. Did I really only get two lives? Ah, screw it. I don't think I'm going to have to beat that first form when I get back there, though. I think it's uh, straight back to the Joker. 
So, with no stories this time, since I've already told all my Batman stories, we'll go ahead and just kind of try to rush through this as quickly as possible. I'm playing so sloppy now. I'm like, oh, who cares? I've already done it once. As long as I've got these missile things and I can uh, just replenish my health, I'm all good. Not very entertaining to watch. And trust me when I say it's not very entertaining to do either. I just, I really don't like sitting here and having to grind away, but it's just really a part of the game. I mean, it's either grind away or go and probably die. And then have to do the whole thing over again. So it's like, eh, I don't really feel like doing the whole thing over again. I mean, I could do like the whole Japanese speedrun thing where they just go through the entire game without getting touched. Or like, they'll be down to the, their last pellet and they'll do something really amazing and just get through the half the game on one pellet of life. So it's like, yeah, I don't really feel like putting myself through that though. <laughs> I'm just not I'm not that precise. I'm not that good. I, I mean, I'm definitely um, uh, What's what's the term? I don't want to say like I'm phenomenal or anything But I, I definitely know what I'm doing for the most part But I don't know what I'm doing well enough to like really perfect these games, you know So I don't try to perfect these games. I just uh, Perfection for me on a personal level is just surviving a really difficult game like this and why are they not giving me hearts give me some freaking hearts man you're wasting my time I'm already maxed out on everything give me some hearts really man seriously hearts give me a heart there we go hit the jackpot how long is it gonna take to get the next one so yeah, I mean, for me, satisfaction, personal satisfaction just comes from being able to, say, one credit clear a game like Batman, or Ninja Gaiden, or Castlevania. And if I use one continue, I don't know, it's not like a slap in the face or anything like that, because usually it's my own fault for dying. But I do get real satisfaction just from being able to complete a really difficult game like this, especially without continuing. Which it looks like we would have gotten really close to doing there, but as long as I complete the game during this Let's Play, that's cool. Because as you guys know, there have been some Let's Plays where I just... I get so stuck I can't even finish the game. So... Those videos almost feel like a waste to me. But I mean, as long as you guys enjoy watching them, then that's cool. I just, I just feel like... I don't know. To me, it, 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 I don't really watch a lot of Let's Plays. I actually don't really watch any Let's Plays now that I think about it. <laughs> To me, it doesn't seem like it would be all that interesting to watch someone fail at a game and not actually see the end of the game, but that's just me, so. And I know uh, a lot of people kind of see that completely differently, so. If you guys enjoy me failing at a game and not finishing it, that that's cool. That's cool to me. I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> I will keep doing them and not uh, worrying not worry about it, so long as you guys keep enjoying it. Jeez, man, give me some hearts. God damn it. It normally doesn't take this long. Ooh, let's be skillful with it. Oh, I just wasted that heart. <laughs> Trying to get fancy. Alright, you know, skirt, we're not gonna need it. We got this. We got this on lockdown. It's not like I haven't done this part of this level a hundred times before or anything, so... Ugh. What the hell am I doing, man? Hey, that was convenient. The dude disappeared. That was Ninja Gaiden style right there. 
And Ninja Gaiden on uh, stage six something, it's, you know, it's the blue area. There's this one section where it's just one straight long corridor of just instant death platforming. And there's this one tiny platform you have to sit on. And there's this one guy that throws these projectiles at you. It's such a pain in the ass part. If you don't have the spinning weapon in that game, it's just ridiculously hard. But there's a trick. You can actually just push the screen over a little bit, and you'll actually kind of, kind of try to respawn back in and out. You'll have him like halfway in and halfway off the screen, and he'll just, you push the screen the, just the right way, he'll just disappear completely. You don't even have to attack him. It's hilarious, and it's it's kind of what happened with that, uh, that trap thing here in Batman, claw thing, whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of funny that it happened like that. Let's hope it actually gives me some health this time. Now you can use the, oh shoot, you can use the fact that you can only have three power-ups at a time to your advantage because the thing will stop firing at you. So if you get a heart, what I'd suggest doing is just getting all three out and then you have more time to grab it. To grab the heart, I mean. So you can kind of control how the thing fires at you for a brief moment just by simply having three fire, I'm um, sorry, power-ups out. See? God, God! Talking too much, not focusing. Kinda like so. Alright, just one more heart. Give me one more heart. One more heart. Come on, you can do it! You can do it! You can do it! Come on, give me a heart, damn it. There we go. Well, that was close. Alrighty. Alright, please just write to the Joker. Yes. Greetings, Bat Brain. Are you ready to meet your destiny? Um, sure. doing man okay that's right pretty sure you can duck his shots what the Jesus man That is ridiculous, man. Alright, we're only at 50 minutes. That's actually not... I thought we were longer than that. <sighs> See, I'm kind of like trying to figure him out at the same time. I'm just like, okay.
All right, let's try this again. Wow, okay, so you cannot duck that. That really sucks. You can if you're up close, but you can't if you're far away. I always thought you could duck it. Ah. <laughs> Got him. That's it, guys. Got him. So basically you dodge the lightning, then you have to, just like that, move in and start punching him right away, otherwise you get nailed by his gun. So what am I supposed to do? Oh, you have to move into him. <laughs> Well, that's actually pretty a pretty good feeling. I haven't done that in ages. I mean, it's been five years since I beat this game for the first time, and I haven't beaten this game since then. And this is a game I kind of wanted to try to eventually do a long play on, but screw it, I've got a Let's Play now. <laughs> uh, that's really cool. I just, man, I haven't done that in a long time. That's awesome. So Joker, guys, basically jump in at him. You're basically taking advantage of the fact that, you know, once you're hitting an enemy, when they're blinking, they won't hurt you if you're touching them. So, um, so you jump in, punch him, he throws the lightning, you have to move out of the way, otherwise you get hit by the lightning. But the second you dodge that lightning, move in right away, start punching, because then he puts his gun back out. And if you're not punching him already, you're going to get hit by his bullet, and those bullets take away, like like a third of your health or something like that. And they have a really, really big hitbox too. As you can see, there was a couple times I died where it looks like I should have cleared his bullet, but it was so big, I, I couldn't clear it. I couldn't jump over it, so. That's funny, kind of like my Abadox Let's Play. This is clocking in at just under an hour, so that's pretty cool as well. <laughs> now look, it's the Bat logo. The good old-fashioned one from the old Tim Burton film. That was a great movie. Um, my brother was actually talking about that one recently. He, he just watched it again for the first time uh, last... Not the first time, but he watched it again after a very long time of having not seen it and um, last week. And he thought it was really, uh, really good still. And then he went and watched the second one and then he watched Batman Forever and then Batman and Robin. And he said, well, those two suck <laughs> but the original batman and batman returns are still pretty good uh, especially the first one so but i gotta go back and watch the first one again it's been a long time since i've seen it but i have good memories of it so Whew. all right guys well that basically does it uh that's batman for the 8-bit nintendo i hope you enjoyed this video um Hope you didn't mind me rambling on for <laughs> about various stories here and there. But it was kind of fun for me, uh, reminiscing about a lot of the times I had with this game. And uh, it's good to have finished it again. It's been a long time since I finished it. So, But anyway, guys, with that, uh, again, I'm Austin. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I've got more Let's Plays like this on the way. And uh, for everyone else, thanks for watching as usual. And, well... I'll see you guys soon. So until then, take care.